Welcome in everyone. We've brought this three liter M20 project indoors because it's uh, starting to get winter time and uh, to be comfortable, we're in a little storage room here that uh, stays pretty warm. So um, I'm gonna focus on this video on just doing piston to wall clearance. So we have the set of CP Carrillo pistons that are custom for a 3.1 liter M20. These are 85 millimeter bore. And what I wanna show and just highlight is how I measure up the piston to wall, cylinder wall clearance on this engine. And just a disclaimer, I'm not a professional, but rather than just taking the machine shop's word for it, I bought a simple uh, dial bore indicator from Shars and uh, seems to be a pretty decent one. And uh, I'm gonna show you how I measure these up and we'll make sure that they're correct when we go to put this together. Cause uh, you know, taking the machine shop's word for it on some expensive pistons and expensive work that you have done on stuff isn't always the best. We always wanna double check. So let me get this set up and uh, we'll start into it. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do when we're addressing the measurements for the cylinder to piston clearance, uh, we need to look at the spec sheet. So any set of pistons worth their salt is going to have a uh, piston spec sheet, and we're going to look for the bore. So this is the bore that these pistons were made for. So a three inch, 346 thousandths and four tenths. That's 85 millimeters. So uh, just letting you know, everything's gonna be in inches. And uh, down here, the piston measurement, the gauge point is 500 thousandths or a one half inch up from the bottom of the skirt. And that diameter is 3.3419. So, if we take the bore and we subtract the piston from it, that gives us four and a half thousandths. Okay, so our target is four thousandths and five tenths. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'll show you how we get this set up so that we could measure that. All right, so I don't wanna go over this in a ton of depth because you can find whole videos on how to use outside micrometers. But just to suffice, let's just say we're setting this up at the bore diameter, the, the bore uh, diameter that's called for on the spec sheet. So that 3.3464, uh, 3 okay? So that's exactly what I've set this up at. And then what you're doing with the, the dial bore is you're just gauging this so that this is zeroed out at the desired bore size. So that way, when you go to measure, you can see if it's uh, over or under the desired bore size. So you're basically just setting your bore size as a target. Um, so anyway, maybe I can go into depth a little bit more on that later, but there's tons of really good videos on that that explain it a little better from machinists, but that's how we set this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, We'll just turn the camera over to the engine and I can show you how we kind of measure this. Right, so I got this all set up. I went out, put my outside micrometer in a vise and I set this in and got it zeroed out. Just keep in mind, the temperature of everything will change a little bit, you know, a few tenths uh, with this kind of stuff. So you may have to measure it twice. I've already measured everything here and uh, I'm just going back to sanity check and make a little video on it. So uh, what we're trying to do now is we're just gonna set this in the bores and we're gonna go up and down the bores in a few different spots and go down each of them. And we're just gonna see how different the reading is from what the standard is. And the standard I have set this to is 85 millimeters, so the bore size. And uh, we're just gonna see how many tenths off it is. I don't know if you can, really see this, but this measures uh, 10 tenths of one thousandth. So each one of those little marks and then each one of the large numbers is a thousandth. So, uh, yeah. So basically, let me see, we, we rock this guy in just like this. 
and uh, you just go back and forth in the board until you find the lowest spot. And keep in mind too, we're also measuring across the engine. So the bores are kind of egg shaped and the widest part of the bore is across, not uh, bore center to bore center like that. So just across like this. So you're also gonna wanna make sure that you get to the widest point. So you can move your measurement around and make sure that you're, you're kind of centered on the bore. And uh, so right here, going back and forth, I don't know if you can see that really well. Let me just, um, let me zoom in. And you can kind of see a little bit better, but if we go down at its lowest point, we're about nine tenths uh, over. So it's on the plus side. So it's actually getting larger um, as we go in. And then if we drop it in the bore a little bit more, might be a touch tighter, like eight to seven and a half. As we get towards the bottom, it's a little bit tighter. But up here at the top, um, we're definitely about eight tenths. Um, so we're going to take that, we're going to write it down, we're going to go across and do that for every cylinder. And uh, yeah, just a uh, little sanity check to make sure all of these are right. So I've gone through and previously measured everything, and we're roughly a thou large on this, so we're at... 5.5 thousandths, and then the rest of them are about a half thou um, over, which is totally fine. And the reason I know that's fine is because I called the manufacturer of the pistons and talked to, I think it was Tony. He was super helpful. I told him everything here. He looked up my order number and found the exact material, everything, and told me that uh, as long as you're under about 7 thou uh, for the first setup, you're going to be probably okay. Uh, it's not ideal to be too big, but because they wear into each other. So after a couple seasons of racing, he said, uh, if you set them up at like four and a half thou, they'll open up a couple thou. Um, so basically you want them as, as tight as you can get to the spec when you first start. And then over time they'll open up and it just gives you some room to grow. Uh, so basically if you're ever wondering, just consult with the piston manufacturer and they will tell you for sure what your piston to wall should be. Because I was worried being five and a half thou would be too much and it's totally fine. He's like, yeah, that one will be a touch, uh, touch wider, touch looser, but it's not going to make, it's not going to like piston slap or anything crazy. Um, he said, when you really want to, you're really going to have trouble is when it's about double or you're getting close to double the, uh, the spec so four and a half that'd be like nine thou uh, that'd be pretty pretty bad for this forged piston so anyway uh go through measure all those and then we're going to number each cylinder these are already numbered because they have a firing order and then over there on the pistons we're just going to start numbering them and we'll measure them up let me uh take you over to the table and i'll show you how i do that okay so now a quick overview on the pistons this is what one of the pistons look like and you can't just measure these anywhere because they're actually a lot smaller at the top than they are at the bottom. So the skirt is actually what is the closest tolerance. And then up at the top, they taper and they're smaller. That's accounting for uh, heat and growth. And uh, yeah, so there's so much heat up here. This will actually grow a lot more than down here. So that being said, there's a gauge point which happens to be one half inch up from the bottom of the skirt. So I've already gone with my calipers, measured a half inch, and then I put a little mark with a Sharpie. You can see right there. And uh, that's where we're gonna measure these. So it'll tell you, once again, on the spec sheet, like all this, the piston manufacturer will tell you, there's your gauge point and there's your turn diameter. So we are looking for 3.3419. Um, so, got my mic here and this is a little it takes a little bit of practice if you've never measured anything with a outside micrometer and I'm not I'm still not a an expert on it but you definitely want to set uh, the piston 
somewhere where it's not going to move around all that much. And then you start taking your, your gauge point. So I'm just going to set up the camera in a little different spot and we'll jump into that. Okay. So hopefully you can see everything here. I've got this set to the bore diameter, so it is slightly larger, but I'm just going to back it off. Um, ever so slightly just so it fits over the piston without scuffing it and basically I've got to get this right over that mark so it'll take just a little bit of finessing and uh, yeah it, it takes some takes some practice and uh, I'm definitely not the best at it but you're going to turn this small part until it's clicking and then you also you're going to have to like twist the piston back and forth to get your to get a, a reading because there's if your uh, micrometer tilts up and down it's going to get wide so you can see me tilting it and if you're going left to right it's going to narrow it tapers on both sides so it takes a little bit of practice to try to get this um, lined up but after a little bit you'll get it kind of dialed in move it around a little bit and then pretty soon you'll have your, your measurement. And I have already gone through and measured these guys up and they are spot on, um, but it just takes a little bit of finessing and uh, you can go ahead and measure those guys up. And just be careful because these have carbide tips, um, they will scratch the aluminum. So if you're not careful, uh, you will kind of scratch this a little bit. Um, I might've actually just, just barely, barely, barely put a scratch uh, on the surface, not enough that you can really feel, but you can kind of see right there. So just in measuring one up uh, my first time, it uh, it can get a little bit crazy. But anyway, make sure you write all this down, keep track of it. Uh, you can get spec sheets off the internet pretty easy for engine building. And that way you can keep track of all this and you know of certainty which cylinders have what dimensions. For me, I can go through two if I ever pull this engine down later and I can see each one of these is uh, basically the same. This guy is five tenths uh, over this size, so about a thou over target. And uh, you can watch those clearances. So especially if you're in a, in a race program or something, it becomes really important. For someone who's just building uh, something that's more of like a daily driver or something basic that isn't super high performance, you want it... You want it really close, but you're not planning on uh, checking it all the time. So it's not quite as crucial and you could probably take your machine shop's word for it. But if you have the tools, it's always something easy to do. You can go through, give yourself a little sanity check on a high horsepower build like I'm doing. I mean, it's not crazy high horsepower, but it is forced induction in a high performance with forged pistons. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that they're all right, because if they're wrong, it can get really expensive very fast. And uh, we're about having fun and going fast for less money, not more than we need to spend. So anyway, um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully it's not too boring. I'm really excited to start putting this engine together. I've got some connecting rods and pistons and all kinds of stuff ready to go in this. So I'm just going to share what I do along the lines of this. I'm not a professional engine builder, but it's fun to carry uh, the camera around and show you guys what I got going on. So anyway, enjoy. Um, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.